Hey you guys, welcome back to the channel, yes! Christmas time is upon us, and today we're going to be giving in to those Christmas urges and doing a Christmas drawing. I love doing Christmas drawings so much. <laughs> no, that is not sarcasm. That is a genuine, genuine face. I love Christmas time. It is one of my favorite times of the year, not just because we get stuff, because I am a giver. For some reason, my mom gave me that ability to just give, a give, a give, and I love to give. It makes me feel so good. Today we're going to be working with XP Pen. XP Pen actually sent me their newest, latest, and greatest tablet. <laughs> tablet. Their Artist 12 second generation series. And man, what a great time I've had with this tablet so far. So to give you a little bit of overview of what the tablet is, it's the Artist 12 pen display second generation. Um, I actually got the color that is my favorite color. It's the color gray, and you'll see here in just a moment, whatever we unbox it. And just to give you an overview, it's 1920 by 1080 HD, true HD. It's got 90% NTSC color gamut with 127% saturation for sRGB and 94% uh, Adobe RGB. It's it's it, it's important to say these 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 uh, numbers because a lot of people use these tablets for color correction whenever you're going to print your CMYK, your RGB, and you want to have color correction across different formats. Full lamination, man, awesome at this price point. Um, it's using the new X3 Elite technology, which if you're unfamiliar with that, go ahead and go to xppen.com and watch their video on the new X3 technology. I've used it in their 16 uh, tablet series and it was absolutely phenomenal. 8,192 levels of pressure sensitivity with 60 degrees of tilt. It's got 5,080 LPI and it's got, uh, gosh, it's just got a lot of stuff going on, right? At this price point, you know, it, the thing is, XB Pen is stepping up their game. Every single time they create a tablet, they're upping their game. They're upping their tech, their, their quality, their fit and finish. I mean, my goodness, what a great time it is to be a digital illustrator. So, let's get to the unboxing, and then we're going to do a Christmas illustration. <laughs> so, don't fast forward. Just enjoy the process, and we're going to have a lot of fun today, you guys. So, enjoy. And here's what I received in the mail. So, this is the box on all of its wrapped goodness. Great quality box, as you see. Just fantastic. Their fit and finish is awesome. Here's some of the um, overview of what you're going to be receiving. The stylus, the tablet, and the diagonal 11.9 inch uh, measurement. And, of course, the attributes, if you need this information whenever you purchase the tablet. Okay, and here is the unboxing for the XP Pen Artist 12 inch pen display, second generation. This is their current most recent release, powered by the X3 pen technology. Um, I know the previous tablet that I reviewed had this X3 pen technology, and I believe it was the 16 Pro model that just came out recently, and, and that particular technology is absolutely wondrous. The packaging looks fantastic, so let's go ahead and get rid of this plastic wrap real quick. As you guys know that I'm a huge fan of unboxings. Came directly from China, Shenzhen. Let's go ahead and flip it over. Look at some of the tech specs here. So, we're looking at the Artist 12 pen display. So, we're looking at uh, 1920 by 1080 resolution, 90% NTSC, and 127% saturation uh, sRGB and 94% uh, Adobe RGB. That means these color gamuts are important for people who want color corrected uh, artwork. Uh, whenever they're comparing to profiles in, in programs like Photoshop, Illustrator, and some of those other programs, InDesign. Um, so what you're looking at is what you're going to actually get whenever you print. So then the brightness, uh, let me see. Typical, so this probably has to do with the number of nits that, um, that it 
emanates and it's got over 8,192 levels of pressure sensitivity. It does come with tilt, which is awesome. 580 LPI lines uh, per inch. So it's a high resolution display. And as far as I can see, you've got, let me see, ports included. So it does have ports, USB-C full featured, which includes power and data. Um, and then it supports Mac OS 10, Android, so you could probably plug it into the side of a, or the bottom of an Android phone and go from there. Packaging's very nice. It's got a matte coating. So let's go ahead and slice into this. Flipping it over. So whenever they asked me what color I was interested in reviewing, of course, I had to say green because green is my favorite color. They sent this to me um, for free. Uh, however, all the opinions that are in this video will be my own. So if it's great, I'm going to tell you it's great. If it's terrible, I'm going to tell you it's terrible. First of all, I've never seen this. <laughs> they included, oh, like a little soft, cushy black material. Wonderful. Love it. Second of all, this is indicative of XP Pen. They've got their tablet wrapped in this looks like cellophane type material so let's go ahead and extract the tablet itself turn it over it's got a tab here to open the tablet we're gonna put this to the side because that is obviously the star of the show now we're gonna look at the peripherals okay so I'm familiar with this particular cable set as this is what came with the 16 so what I'm seeing right now is an extension USB and then I'm seeing this very robust <laughs> cable combination. So what I don't see, so it goes from USB-C to HDMI, and then you have your other peripherals. So this would probably be a power port, and this is going to be a, a USB for the pin technology. And here's an extension that you stick into the power port, and this goes into a power brick. So that's what they include in the package. Now what, from my understanding, the item, this item right here comes with full featured USB-C. Let's go ahead and open this. Oh, I love green. Green makes me all tingly inside. Oh, tingly. Love the green. Green and me are friends. First impressions. Quality is good. The weight is really, really good. You can always tell an item its quality by the plastics they use. An XP pen never skimps on plastic or uh, the build quality. You know, every single time they release a new tablet, they always step it up a notch. So, step two. So, I did step one, and all of this is okay. No, 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 no. Let's see, anti glare. So, it's kind of anti glare film on top. So, if you look, they're trying to explain to you you have an anti glare here and then it looks like anti-glare film protective film so there's a protective film on top then there's an anti-glare underneath and on the very bottom there is the lcd screen so we got to be very careful in peeling this off oh! very nice very easily executed and i don't see any bubbles or anything like that and i did not end up tearing off that protective coating and it is a matte finish which is really nice because whenever you draw you don't want a bunch of reflections and things and of course over on the left hand side they have included which are the quick keys um, you know in today's design language we're trying to get rid of these black borders and you know that being said this is a smaller budget ta budget tablet and you know, I'm not expecting them to go edge to edge. It would be nice if they did, because personally, I don't use these particular keys. But the reality is a lot of people do, and they kind of had to hit the center. You know, whenever you do product design, sometimes you do have to do that a happy center. Pen display, like I said, the quality is fantastic. I love how they have like a two-tone right here. It's very nice. So then we're going to come over here. So we have the three-in-one, which is this cable right here. Okay, that's where the three-in-one cable goes in. And you can see it because there's a little bit of an indication right here and right here. The USB-C is what I'm most interested in. Now, they didn't include a USB-C with the computer or with the tablet. So you're probably gonna have to 
uh, purchase a USB-C if you just want to run one cable. My computer supports USB-C, so I'm just going to be running one cable. And just note that it is not included. So it looks like there's a little plug in there, which is very nice. So I'm going to plug that into the uh, into that three-in-one because I will not be using that particular port. Actually, I don't know if I can go in there. Little bit of a hiccup here. Go in. Let's see if it goes back in the one that I just did. It does. Interesting. So it goes in this one, no problem. I think there's a slight size variable there. So just to make sure that you don't end up messing things up. <laughs> So here's the USB-C and here's the 3-in-1. The 3-in-1 included goes in there and the non-provided, which you will have to provide the USB-C. That would be for power and data transfer. So here's looks like a volume. Oh, that's probably for the, bright, the brightness and of course the power switch. What I like about this tablet, first of all, it's not overly heavy. It's kind of about like the right um, balance between heaviness and quality, not quality, heaviness and uh, bulkiness. Because you can have something really small that's heavy or you can have something really bulky that's light. So this is a nice balance. Then you have the rubber bottoms. I love these. So you stick this on. Let's go ahead and move this box out of the way really quick. You can stick this on a desk. And this is at a good, probably 25 to 35 degree angle. And you can see the rubber bottom is inhibiting it from going down too quickly. And that's really nice. Um, so if you're on a desk and you're, you're drawing, your tablet's not moving away from you here and there. Uh, so let's go ahead and put this to the side. We'll grab the remainder. Here you go. And of course, XP Pen is really good about including so many different things from this wonderful pen technology. Now, what I'm noticing, since it is in the budget category, you're not going to get that that high premium case. You're not going to get that high premium uh, cylinder that has the pen with the extra nibs. What you're going to get is the pen, that X3 technology. Again, very light, batteryless, 800. 8,192 levels of pressure sensitivity. It looks like there's a two button and uh, there is no eraser on this particular pen. So let's go ahead and put him right there and we'll open up the documentation. Put that to the side. So to keep the price point down, they have included the nibs in a loose format like this, which I think is okay. I would have liked to send this possibly in a better form factor. Maybe if there, it could have been in a little stand and you can stick it in there and these would be in the bottom. But the reality is price a lot of times dictates uh, production cues. They have a, a budget to work inside and you can't go outside the budget. So I had to put the quality in the tablet, not so much in the peripherals of the items included. And of course, XP Pen always includes one of these little gloves. Believe it or not, this glove, I've got quite a few of these. I use these all the time, and a lot of people have asked me, why do you use a glove? Well, first of all, it helps me glide whenever I'm going over the um, over the screen. And second of all, it, it, it inhibits uh, scratches and, and stuff maybe that might happen uh, if I have a ring on or, uh, uh, you know, it's just fingerprints, all these other things that I don't really want to have to deal with. There, there's the quick guide for setup. Here's the pin removal, nib removal uh, item. And of course, the lovely lint-free cloth whenever you need to clean off your lovely XP pen screen. It's important that you guys don't use paper towels, you don't use Kleenex, you don't use any kind of regular cotton-based towel because that will actually scratch the surface of the mat uh, material. You want to always use the lint-free cloth provided and that will uh, make your screen protector um, or whatever's on the screen last that much longer, right? And we love, we love the XP Pen uh, logo. This lasts probably the logo on the glove if you use it regularly lasts probably about two months, maybe a month and a half, at most. Um, so let's go ahead and get everything ready. We're going to get everything set up. I'm going to install the driver, and we're going to start drawing a fun illustration on the XP Pen Artist. 12 pen display second generation. That's a very long title. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. 
Okay, so here we are. This is the XP Pen Artist 12, second generation. Um, I went ahead and hooked it up to a Microsoft Surface all-in-one because the other device that I was using, I believe, since it was running Windows 10, I'm not really sure, it didn't, it didn't activate properly. And I've had this issue with a couple of other tablets, but this particular machine seems to accept the interface cables no problem. I was actually... Um, I was I had to use the three in one cable that is included, so that's really a benefit. So um, yeah, so let's go ahead and see how she drives. So first of all, I wanted to make a comment on the black. So there is a lot of black, you know, now that we have a little bit of better understanding of what exactly you're presented with and there's a lot of black. So would I like to see less? Yeah, I would, honestly. Um, but at this price point, you know, I gotta be honest, these, the, the top layer, the glass is bonded with the LCD. So you're not going to have any parallax. The, uh, latency, which you can see is very minimal. And sometimes the latency doesn't have anything to do with the tablet or the pen. It has to do with the machine. And this is an older machine. So let's go ahead and preface that if there are any hangups or issues concerning latency or anything like that. It's probably going to be because the computer's a little bit older. And that's just one of those deals where you have to, you know, kind of tongue in cheek and say, okay, you know, the device, even though it looks like it might be underperforming, it's not. It has to do with the machine. Now, this particular machine is an i7, 16 gigs of RAM with a video card of 2 gigs. Um, and I think the processor is 3.5 gigahertz. So technically, it should do really well. <clears throat> But on the other hand, you know, like I said, <laughs> Windows machines are very particular and they're very, how do I put it? They don't always work the way it's designed. So that being said, let's go ahead and get started. As you see, there is a little bit of hesitation. Again, that's not going to be because of the tablet, but it, it probably is the computer. So I didn't pre-program any of these, these buttons right here because honestly, I don't use them. Um, I've been using this device right here. This is also made by XP Pen. You can see it's got a little wear on the side and it's it's been through the ringer a couple times, um, you know, the back and you see the numbers are starting to fade because I use this all the time. This is one of my go-tos for quick keys. You know, I, I started my career with a keyboard and I like having things over here on the left-hand side. So I typically had the keyboard over here on the left, but if I'm using it on all in one, and I need the tablet in front of me, this is my go-to device right here, bar none. I mean, this is an inexpensive peripheral. It's got a USB dongle. You take that out, you plug it into the side of your computer, you pre-program these, um, these quick keys uh, into the unit, and it's all Bluetooth. And what's really cool is, it, it obviously it's paired with the XP Pen driver app. You can see I've got different programs pre-programmed in and it recognizes it as soon as it's turned on and plugged in. It's got a little switch back here, a little, little switch to turn it on and it runs on a AAA battery. And you get probably about a year out of it if you use it heavily. And I do, I love that device. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. First of all, I've reviewed a lot of tablets in my days. I've reviewed, gosh, Wacom, uh, XP Pen, Sense Labs, but the new technology in this pen, the X3 pen, it's almost zero latency. So whenever I go to activate, it's it's got at least a finger width of activation right whenever I come in, which is awesome. And then in terms of recognizing when I'm moving the pencil, it's really good. <clears throat> so again, any kind of, I think any kind of hesitation you're gonna see, is the computer running tasks in the background, which at this particular point in time, I can't really do anything about. All right, so what am I gonna draw today? I have really thought long and hard about what I wanna draw, and I decided I'm gonna draw Phoenix. Phoenix is their fox. They're cute as, gosh, he's cute as heck. A uh, little fox character that, uh, you know, XP Pen has. I drew him for Halloween, a Halloween, um, his ears are huge, a Halloween character, 
and I had him sitting on uh, a bunch of pumpkins and he was uh, getting ready to eat his uh, his uh, uh, candy bowl and and I really had a lot of fun and lo and behold XB pin was like hey you know we really liked your illustration we really love you to um, you know, do something similar for Christmas. And, and in the meantime, you can review our tablet. And I'm like, absolutely. So that's what I'm doing today. Simple shapes, starting out simple shapes. That's the way I always start out. And the reason for that is because that's the way I draw. I draw because simple shapes are easy. Whenever you look at them and you're going in and you're starting to fix your composition, you're starting to look at exactly what you want to do Let's make his tail real poofy. Let's... I haven't thumbnailed this yet. So what you're seeing is me thinking live. See, I want him to get a big ball of lights. You know. Good pressure sensitivity. I'm not feeling any drop off or anything like that, which is good. Today we're working in Photoshop. If you hear the fans come on, it's because again, this is an older machine using those Intel processors and it doesn't have anything to do with the tablet. Another thing that I wanted to comment is the color of green is, I don't know what you would call that, kind of a desaturated green. Uh, and it is nice. Uh, I'm a saturated kind of guy. I like green a lot. And the green is, is not a forest green, but it's kind of like a pleasant pastel green. Um, and it's rubberized. Everything is rubberized. Here is, here's the glass, and then you come up here and it's rubberized, which gives it a really nice tactile feel. And it, it's got that really good uh, feeling of quality. Just so you understand where I'm coming from. So, what I'm using for reference, I actually pulled off of the Instagram. Right there, so they posted, XB Pin posted uh, Phoenix sitting there um, as a 3D sculpt. So that was pretty cool. If you don't follow XP Pin, either XP Pin or XP Pin USA, I highly recommend you do that. You can see some of their new products, some of their development, and they really, really uh, respect the artist's uh, community, which is awesome. So now what I'm doing is, is I'm just going in, I'm defining the character base. You know, I've only drawn Phoenix, I think, twice. So broad, big, broad shapes. Big, broad shapes is where he's at right now. So we're going to have that eyebrow come up. Have that other eyebrow come up. All right. Come here. Important you put in those little um, pupils uh, quickly to really establish that mood whenever you're doing stuff like this. Again, this is just, just literally the preliminary sketch. You guys are seeing it real time. Okay, this needs to come up a little bit higher. So we're gonna have to bring that up. That ear comes around. And you have that little fur patch that comes right there. Okay. And then he's got his eyebrow here. And then we're gonna have this one a little bit higher. It comes down like that, because he's trying to untangle some lights. Go ahead and zoom out a little bit. You can see where I'm coming with going with this. See, too, I have different versions of him in his. See, some of them have. Oh, there we go. And one of the really great things too is to have visual reference like this. This is available on the XB Pen website uh, store. This is made of uh, resin, I believe, plaster resin. And this is gives me a great visual 3D reference whenever I do characters like this. So right now, I need to adjust his ears and I was kind of concerned about his feet. Now they've simplified his feet to be able to print him uh, effectively and his clothes are really simplified. So I would call this a stylized character. Now I'm gonna go a little bit more detailed and that's actually the character that I used. <clears throat> 
whenever I did the Halloween version. If you don't, if you haven't seen that Halloween version, definitely um, I posted it on my channel. So look that up and watch that. It's so much fun uh, to do. All right. So now has a little bear pad. Now, interestingly enough, um, there's it seems there's different versions. Some of them have this little hair patch right here, which I like, and I'm probably going to put a hat on him, but not right now. Actually, let me see what I can do here. Let's see if we can't put a little hat on him, like he's a little elf. Hmm. We'll see. Not really sure about that one. <laughs> that happens sometimes, right? That happens. Get a little bit of hesitation with this. I changed the graphic settings on this computer as well um, quite a few times. And it seems that, you know, if you go ahead and specify the graphics card to be the main bearer of the weight, uh, you know, and you go to disconnect, because this one, this particular machine, you can disconnect the base. And then you lose the graphics card, and then it's like, ah, so this one has two graphics cards in it. One of them, I believe, is one gigabyte, and it takes care of the screen, and the other one is the graphics card for the uh, peripherals, uh, not the peripherals, for the, um, for the programs. So let's go ahead and have his mouth open a little bit. There we go. Let that come back a little bit more. Here, here's his nose. Okay. So what are we gonna have him dressed in? I love Christmas sweaters, so let's do a Christmas sweater. So first of all, let's go ahead and give him some fingers so he doesn't look weird. Three fingers, how many fingers does Phoenix have? One, two, three, four. Let's make sure. One, two, three, four, five. So on this one, there's one, two, three, four, and a thumb. And it looks like on my reference, there's three fingers and a thumb. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and just do three. Old animator's trick. Okay. Do, 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 do. Christmas time. Hopefully everybody's having a great holiday season. Gosh, it seems like yesterday oh, that it was January. Where did the year go? Oh, darling, where did the year go? Let's give him a sweater here. He's been eating lots of turkey. <laughs> it may seem convoluted and busy, but trust me, it'll work out. It always does. Okay, let's go ahead. We'll have this leg come down, and then we'll have it. You can see a little bit of the bottom. Okay, here's his tail. His tail, I want to be a clear silhouette. Maybe it wraps around a little bit, like so. So far, the tablet is, is flawless. Now I can adjust the brightness over here on the right-hand side. It's got a rocker. So as you see, I got it all the way bright because whenever it was down in the middle, that's what it came from the factory. It was a little dark. So I decided to go ahead and push that brightness all the way up. And it said, increasing brightness will increase power consumption. I have everything plugged in right now, so I'm not really concerned with that. Now, if I was in a, a situation where power was important, you know, such as, maybe in the field or something like that, that particular option is really nice because I can go ahead and pull down the brightness and save battery life. Because believe it or not, you can connect the tablet to the computer and it draws all or draws its all of its power from the computer. So if you get in a situation where you don't have access to a power port or a plug-in, you can utilize your computer as your power source. So that's very convenient. Okay, so... Okay, so let's do this other hand right here. So it's always good for me to pre-visualize, and you'll see me zoom out quite a bit, just because I want to make sure the proportions are correct. Let's go ahead and push him down just a little bit. 
let's go back to brush. Zoom in, zoom out, zoom in, zoom out. That's something that I do a lot. I need to see, uh, I need to see him uh, in context, in composition, how he looks, make sure all the proportions are right. So let's go ahead and go up, and here's his thumb. A little anthropomorphic, so he's got some human characteristics, but he's a fox, so I want that sweater. Here's his arm, it's kind of coming towards you just slightly. So it is slightly foreshortened. So I'm gonna have that come up. Maybe here's the neck of his sweater. And come here, he's a little chunky. So let's go ahead and have that come down. Again, you know, being able to switch on the fly with this button right here that's programmed in is nice. Okay, shoulders, here's his neck, comes up, and I want that sweater, see the thing is, is his neck is partially hidden because his head is tilted towards me and angled, so his neck, even though hidden, I still have to give some kind of an indication that something's there. Let's go ahead and round these out. Okay. And again, this is just the preliminary sketch. Let's go ahead and make so a little bit of folds here and there. I'm trying to get that. Maybe it's a furry hat, kind of like a Santa hat. And it's folded up and around, so it's got to go up and around here. Okay. I want him to wear a big old fluffy Christmas sweater. So let's have that here. It's going to be sitting kind of partially on his tail. Okay, let's go back. I'm going to grab my visual reference. His tail is huge in relationship to his body. Um, comes around if he's sitting. Comes around. This is out just a little bit too far. So let's go ahead and put that right there. Actually, I don't want to put that right there because it will fall. So let's go ahead and erase this. Again, this is a 300 DPI document. I'm not getting really any, any latency at all. Okay. There we go. So now we're going to beef up that volume just slightly, kind of curved around. I need to watch that foreshortening a little bit because this foot right here is supposed to be in front. So this is probably a wee bit too big. Yeah, see what it's, what's happening now. And just so you can see, what's happening is this shape is competing with this shape. It's too similar. That is just, that comes with understanding, you know, the way composition and, and things work. So what I'm gonna do is even though I like that, it needs to come up. Around. I'm still not feeling that. Let's go ahead. Let's find the natural arc of the back. Natural arc of the back. This is where his tail starts. There we go. Okay, so now what's gonna happen is it's gonna define a ground plane. So now if you see I did that, it's gonna come here, nice and big, here. Now it becomes something that helps define that composition a little bit better. Okay, maybe we can have, here we'll have, this comes here, this will come here, and of course these are lights and they're strung here. Maybe goes over his tail, comes around here in the front, goes over his leg. He's really just completely immersed in the So file, save as. Move we'll to the desktop and we'll do, let's go ahead and lift our reference up. We'll do Phoenix. 
Christmas. Nice. And of course, save. Now, if something goes awry, ah, I will be okay. <laughs> okay, so Christmas sweater. So I've established where his fingers are. Here, let's go. We're going to define these just a little bit better. Here's his finger. Having this come down into this ball of lights. Now I got to think weight. So weight. Still thinking in simple shapes. Still thinking, you know. Shh. What you can do is you can utilize the lights as kind of a framing element. You know, and maybe he's got a couple lights that are coming up, and he's kind of tangled in them. Right here, opposing. We're gonna do opposing. Okay. I keep. Uh, you're actually hearing me think. <laughs> okay, have that eye come up. Let's get rid of that. That blinking that you see blink, blink, has nothing to do with the tablet. It is a Windows uh, Photoshop issue, very well known. It has nothing to do with the XP Pen tablet. So far, guys, the accuracy and the pressure curve is wonderful of this device. No complaints there. Let's go ahead and check the edges. We're going to check the edge all the way down. We're not seeing any loss of tracking. Let's go all the way to the edge, all the way to the edge. Pretty cool. I am color me impressed. Color me impressed. Okay, so now what I'm doing is I'm just going back, I'm redefining some of those little simple, let's go ahead and do this. Simple visual cues that again, help me find out where stuff is. So let's go ahead and have this, that big old Christmas sweater's gonna come here and can come down. Okay, and he's got his pants on. I want that foot to come up a little bit. Kind of like he's... A lot of times it's the small little visual cues and nuances that help define the character of the piece. He's obviously having fun. He has a smile. And then he has his eyes wide open, so he's very alert. His ears are pointed up and out. So he's he's alert. And he's trying to figure stuff out. But even go going so far as to saying, okay, maybe there's just a little bit of foot tension. Right? just a little bit that you can see. See, even now, whenever I'm doing these feet, I can already tell you that I want to change. I want to give him some uh, Christmas slippers. Right? Christmas slippers? That's not like a good idea. I think so. I love me some Christmas slippers. Okay. Fold, fold. Yeah, I think I will. <clears throat> hmm, maybe some Bigfoot. I'm a huge Bigfoot person. Okay, let's go back. Let's turn taper off. Okay, now we're going to get into a little bit of the shadowing. Again, tilt. Tilt is, a, uh, is an option. I believe it has 60 degrees of tilt. So let's go ahead to shape dynamics. We're going to turn tilt on. Pin tilt. Now you see this little, I don't know if you can see it, it's a little triangle, that indicates that it does not have tilt. But whenever you put it in, it does. You can see the brush turn. I think that's a Photoshop flaw. Because you can see whenever I turn the brush, it actually turns. Let's make it bigger so you can see. See, there's the brush right there. And every time I turn it, it follows that tilt quotient. So let's do some, just some simple little render shading. Not rendering, again, light source, defining some of the silhouette, better understanding exactly who this character is.
wonderful. What am I going to put on a sweater? Am I going to put a reindeer? Reindeer sound good? So let's go ahead. We'll just put an indication of the reindeer in. It's going to be very simple. Again, simple shapes. Simple shapes. It's going to be simple shapes. It's going to be so good. Simple shapes are so good. Yeah. And then you got... Ch -ch 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 -ch. New artistic term for you guys. Ch -ch 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 -ch. It's called a ch -ch sound. <laughs> All right. So we have basically... Let's go ahead and... What are we going to think? <sighs> um... Man, just a simple background element to help frame him a little bit better. He's got these lights. Got that big old Christmas sweater. He's been eating a lot of turkeys. He likes turkey sandwiches. Okay, let's go ahead and make this a little bit larger. Big. Now, this is a huge brush and... and Kudos to this old machine. This is probably a 2016, 2017 machine. So, a little bit, a little bit. When the brush is that big, it has a hard time rendering the texture. Again, doesn't have anything to do with the tablet, so don't get upset once you get this tablet and be like, this tablet, the latency's horrible. What kind of computer are you working on? I don't know. It's like 15 years old. It's one running Windows 8. It's got a 200 k or, you know, 5 megabyte video card. Yeah, I don't think that's going to work there, buddy. Okay, let's go back. Now, let's do a little pressure test. So, oh man, the pressure is wonderful. I'm just barely allowing the pin to get on the surface. Really good curve, really good curve, and then super dark. And then we're going to go back. Back. Lifting, 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 nothing. Yeah, that's as close as you're going to get to a real pencil, my friend. Okay, so lots of lights. Thing is, is I don't want, I don't want tons of detail in these lights so that's what I'm doing right now I'm just defining the overall basic shape that's all I'm doing basic shape moving on to now on model I want to be on model with Phoenix so what I'm gonna do is in this moment let's go ahead and hit save save file save see I've pre-programmed the save button right here so every time I hit this it saves this is the full screen Boom, boom. This is the space bar. This is the space bar and the option key or alt key, which causes it to zoom in and out. So all of these little details help add to the workflow. Oh gosh. Okay, so, and I've also got the scroll wheel to enlarge and shrink my brush currently with tilt on okay so this is the basics of the illustration so this took roughly about 30 minutes to do with narration so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to go ahead and put you guys on time lapse so you can see the refinement and once i get that ink in then we'll come back and we'll talk about the process of ink um, inking this fun christmas illustration with with review of the Artist 12 second gen from XP Pen. So, enjoy the process. And a process it is indeed. So, what I did, if you look over here on the right hand side, I went ahead and put that initial sketch layer um, thumbnail on its own layer and I, I adjusted the transparency down to about 35%. And now, what I'm doing is I'm going back and I'm not tracing. You know, a lot of people look at that and say, oh, you're just tracing what you already did. And that's not that's not how the whole process works. Um, you know, I've always been a firm believer in finding the right line. And that's exactly what this is. You find the right line 
for the character and in that ink you put expressive lines and you change the sketch somewhat to match who that character is and maybe adjust proportions and making sure um, he stays on model and all of those things and that's exactly what I'm doing right now you know defining that line making sure there's variation of line weight which is thin and thickness of the line according to where it is um, in the placement you see that I was sitting there and I was going you know how would I feel if I was trying to untangle a bunch of wires and lights and stuff and I usually I sat there for a second and I thought I would have my tongue out <laughs> um, and that's exactly what I did it's just a little fun little quip that kind of adds to the character uh, who Phoenix is. So now what I'm doing is I'm going in and I'm just putting in some of those details of that characterization uh, of him and also, um, you know, designing, designing him since I didn't go and do a bunch of, uh, a bunch of character studies. Uh, I have to kind of do things on the fly. I did have a vision of exactly what I wanted to do. Um, but of course in the drawing, in the context of the drawing and the process of execution of the drawing, a lot of times you'll make decisions um, based upon a feeling, based upon what makes sense, based upon, you know, maybe uh, if you're doing it for a client, you know, and just kind of change things up. And again, you know, I made another decision. I was like, you know, maybe he's sitting at home and he's in his PJs. He's got his Christmas sweater on and, you know, he's got his, he's got his little, uh, he's got his elf slippers on. So that's another little fun quip that I added to the illustration is as the creator of the illustration, it is, it is a mandate. It is my mandate to basically create the image that I want. You know, if I'm creating this and I haven't been quote unquote hired to do it with a strict creative brief, then it's up to me as a creative to really do things that make sense in line with what my vision and my idea is. Now, of course, having experience is one of those things that is kind of a two-edged sword because I'm always asking questions of myself and of the illustration. Does this make sense? You know, is it an extra thing that I do need or don't need? And that's something, you know, that obviously comes with experience and a lot of drawing. And, um, gosh, it, it's sometimes it's hard to explain to students and to people that, you know, maybe the layman that doesn't understand the drawing process. But you as a creator, as an illustrator, an artist, a graphic artist, a 3D person, you're there to tell a story, a visual story. And you should always be asking questions uh, of yourself and of the character. And, and sometimes the character will reveal the answers to you. And other times, you know, you have to get up and walk away and think about it. And then that, that solution um, for that visual problem will come to you. And as you see, I'm just going around and, and adding things and subtracting things. And I'm trying to keep the lights very simple because you see there's a lot of them. And I don't want to get bogged down in the mire and, and illustrating, you know, all the highlights and everything on the lights. Because that's not really the focus of the piece. It's really his face. Um, so let's go ahead. We're gonna, I'm going to go ahead and put you on a little stroll music time lapse. So enjoy. And it's time to put in color. Yay! So the fine line is done, and now what I'm doing is just blocking in the color. There's a myriad of ways you can do this. You can do a grayscale image and then do layer transparencies for your color. But for me, in this moment, this is kind of part and partial to how I work. I just block in local color, get the basics down of you know, the characterization and how he's colored, trying to stay on model, 
And then after that, I go in and I will start with layer transparency modes, such as multiply, adding layers, subtracting layers, um, you know, from multiply for shadows to overlay for highlights. And then I'll do, um, you know, maybe some color dodge and just put, uh, you know, the details here and there. You know, but this time, it's kind of like color by numbers, especially if you're just putting in local color. And, and for those of you who don't know what local color is, it's color without light or shadow on it. So, um, that's why I was talking about layer transparencies with multiply uh, and uh, overlay. So, yeah, putting in the color is, again, just, it's a lot of fun. And, you know, making sure that those color choices make sense in the context of the illustration and you know keeping that that fun feeling um and making sure you don't miss any spots and of course using a lot of layers that's important that i think a lot of people uh, artists uh, don't really uh, of course it depends on how you work you know i i work in layers because i'm used to working for people that want to make changes and change their minds and if everything's on one layer then it makes it a little bit harder to change color especially if it's a painted uh, image so, uh, that being said, let's go ahead and turn back on the Christmas music, grab yourself a hot chocolate, and enjoy the show.
And that's where we're going to land with the illustration today. So what was it like drawing on the XP Pen 12 inch uh, artist uh, second generation? So first of all, the Pentec is fantastic. I have no complaints at all with the Pentec. The initial lead in whenever you go and put the pen next to the uh, surface of the device it's the activation is absolutely phenomenal the drawing experience is wonderful there is no complaints whenever it comes to all of that the fit and finish of the product is is again a plus plus XB pen does their homework whenever it comes to creating products for professionals and for novices and hobbyists alike um, the challenge that I had whenever I hooked up this device is, first of all, the initial computer, the, the Lenovo that I hooked it up to, it wouldn't pair with the device at all. I, I went through the 3-in-1, and I also went with a USB-C cable to connect it. That was a challenge, okay? Not a big deal because I, I have a lot of experience whenever it comes to computers. I went over and I grabbed my Surface device, just like I had to do with one of the other um, tablets that I utilize. And I was able to use the 3-in-1 cable that XP Pen provides here, and I had to use uh, a DVI dongle, which is basically something that plugs into the Surface device on the side of the mini DVI port. Now, the newer devices, like the Surface Pro 8, I believe, 7, they all have USB-Cs, so that is probably going to be the best option whenever you go and hook up one of these devices to an all-in-one. If you're hooking up to a desktop, obviously XB Pen provides the cables that you need. And it's just one of those deals where there are multiple fa there are multiple ways to connect this device to different devices. You know, product research in these large companies really dictates that they kind of land in the middle, right? You can't have all USB C, you can't have all HDMI, you can't have all DVI. So, kudos to XP Pen for providing that three in one cable that you know gives you an option um, to do that. Uh, as far as any issues, I really didn't have any issues. I did have a couple blinks here and there, but I believe that's because, again, me using this patch right here, this little cable that you see, which is an in-between, because the Surface device doesn't have an HDMI, so I had to use a converter. Not a big deal. Overall color saturation, wonderful. Uh, as stated uh, in the intro, whenever I did the unboxing, 127 RGB uh, gamut saturation. So I did have to beef up the... Um, the brightness almost to maximum just because at its factory setting the midway was just a little bit dark now I am comparing it to this this screen you see right here which is one of the brightest in the industry um, for all-in-one so um, overall I give it an A++ there there's not much I can really say you know they're manufacturing these devices these days with some of the really high-end uh, attributes um, you know, for the artist and the novice, like I said, for the novice alike, with bonded screens, with screen protectors, with over 8,000 levels of pressure sensitivity, with a batteryless stylus, with multiple button programmable, and then you've got these quick keys on the side, which I'll admit I do not use because I'm used to using a keyboard. However, they're here for you to program. I'm sure that it's ambidextrous, so if you want them on the right or the left hand side, it will it will fly any way that you want to. Um, so that's pretty much all I had for you guys today. This particular character illustration that I did is XB Pen's uh, uh, character mascot. His name is Phoenix. And just for the Christmas season, I wanted to do something to really accentuate this review. And uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed the process. Um, as you see, I finally got to color uh, in the uh, time lapse process. But uh, what I'll do is I'll go ahead and uh, you know, give you a uh, an oversight or an, over, an overview really quick to show you exactly the layer process um, that I utilized in creating this illustration. Okay, and here we are as promised. So over here on the right hand side is my layers palette. So let's go ahead and go through um, what exactly I did. So I'm gonna go ahead and kind of go through all the way. Let's go ahead and get rid of this one because I believe that's my initial sketch. We're going to go from the bottom all the way to the top. Let's go ahead and get rid of all these layers if I can. <laughs> oh, as you see, yeah, the computer is like, what are you doing? 
What are you doing? You're breaking me. So I come from a, a, a apparel and illustration background. So whenever I do illustration in Photoshop, I always was, I don't want to say forced to, but I always had an overview of the production side of things. So you're not going to see a lot of filters. You're not going to see a lot of gradients. You're not going to see a lot of gradient maps. You're not going to see a lot of that stuff. Um, in my illustrations, typically I will, I, I find a way not to use the filters because that again takes up RAM and system resources. So we started out with the, the background here, shadow, background shapes, and you see things. I only do things so far as they make sense in the context of the illustration. I, you know, if I don't have to color in everything behind him, then I won't because you're not going to be able to see it. Uh, in this particular layer format anyway. As you see, as we go through and we start adding the layers, eventually we end up with a finished digital illustration. I love this brush con uh, this brush texture, this brush that I use. Just one of those really fun tools. Again, just the tool. Um, and that's it. That's pretty much all I had for you guys today. So what do you do? What do you do? What do you do? Um, you know, this particular review, I think, uh, in the beginning was a little challenging, but in the end, like I said, the product always shines through at its core. A, a product to me has to do exactly what it's designed for. You know, if I get a tablet that glitches, if I get a tablet that doesn't, uh, it doesn't have a good interface, if I get a tablet that you know, is hard. If you've ever reviewed a tablet or if you have, have ever um, uh, used a tablet and, and it's difficult and it glitches and the power's off and the pen doesn't work, all those things inhibit you from creativity. This particular device only had a couple small hiccups, but I believe that was because of some of the older tech that I had to pair it with um, because it wouldn't pair with one of the devices that is a little bit newer. Said. Overall, great tablet. I highly recommend you guys at least looking into this particular tablet. Budget-wise, I think it's around 200 bucks, and with that level of pressure sensitivity, you can get it in different colors. It looks like it'll last years and years, and the screen quality is fantastic. Um, I believe it's uh, uh, 1080 by 1920, so it's not 4K, it's not 2K, but uh, for that price point, my goodness, you know, it's really hard to beat, especially whenever you're looking at, if you have a laptop and you want to get into digital illustration and, you know, you're considering something like an iPad or an iPad Pro, just your standard iPad is over $300 that supports Apple Pencil and then you have to pay for the pencil, you know, and then if you want to go Pro, you're looking at eight, seven ninety nine, eight ninety nine plus the pencil and then you're going to buy a keyboard and another $300. So whenever you price match or compare a device like this, especially if you already have a laptop or an all-in-one, all you have to do is flip the bill for a couple hundred bucks and you get the pen, you get an HD screen, you can choose your color, and you're off to the races with digital illustration. So, man, what a great time to be a digital illustrator it is, right? So that's all I had for you guys today. Hope you liked the long-winded review. But I'm always one of those guys that just doesn't draw straight lines with pressure tests. I want to go through the tablet. I want to use it for hours and hours and hours to see some of the nuances that make the tablet usable. You know, could I use this in the professional field? Absolutely. I go out into the forest. I bring my laptop with me. I bring my all-in-one. And believe it or not, if you have a Samsung phone, you can plug the USB-C right into the Samsung phone. And if it has like Sketchbook Pro or one of those apps... You can actually use this with a phone. So that's that's incredible to me. You know, you have a, 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 a portable work studio to go and travel wherever you need to. And the brightness is really good. Um, just overall, thumbs up. So hopefully you guys like the review. And please, please, please hit that notification bell and subscribe if you liked what you see. That's important. If you didn't, then there's a lot of other creative content on YouTube that. Uh, is is available to you so and i'm always going to be honest with you i'm always going to look exactly what makes a difference in the in the products and i'm going to teach you something in the meantime so thank you guys and merry christmas